Hi there, Lillian here. I just want to remind you ladies that <clears throat> I always try to create my content to provoke you to ask the question, is my marriage dysfunctional because of a dif difficult husband or am I married to a dangerous man? By sharing my journey of how our God woke me up to the reality that my marriage was not just super difficult, like I thought it was for 30 years, but that I was being covertly abused because I was married to a wolf. It's my goal to trigger. I know most people apologize for triggering others, not me. It's my goal to trigger common abuse for another victim that's trapped. And with that awakening, she'll be able to see that she's actually married to a wolf in sheep's clothing and how healing will allow her to safely and organically take back her personhood from the predator that lives in her house. To begin a journey of self-discovery that increases her confidence in our God and her self-esteem that's rooted in God's love, her boundaries will begin so that she can safely gray rock as God drives that covert narcissist out of her home. Today, I'm going to talk about how wolves can hide in works, but not fruit. Jesus didn't say, you'll know them by their works. He said, you'll know them by their fruit. I know that I thought that fruit and works were basically the same. They're not. And in some cases, our English versions have even translate, they even translate them to be used interchangeably. Works are external actions. They're visible. One person does an action and many others see them in that action. Church activity gives the impression of good fruit by the nature of the works being religious. Yet in Matthew 7, Jesus tells us that works mean nothing. Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that in your name? And many other things in your name. Looking back at verses 1 and 2, Jesus says it's not safe to judge the works of others. You know why? Because you end up creating a log in your eye that blinds you to that person's faith. Fake faith is hidden from you behind that log. Because fruit happens in relationship, not in a group or crowd for many to witness. But fruit is witnessed in the one-to-one -one relationship. It reveals who a person really is, regardless of what they do. Fruit becomes visible to another person as that person experiences the manifestation of it in relationship. But outside of relationship, good works can show up whether there's faith or not. In either case, it's only the person themselves that know whether their works are authentic because only they can see their own faith. Works are what we do with our faith and they can be completely activated in the human spirit. Humans can do good things. They don't need faith in God through Jesus Christ. Evil people can do good, Matthew 7, 11. But without faith, the good they do doesn't please God, Hebrews 11, 6. So, wolves can do good works for others to see. They pretend to have faith, so they look like sheep. The impetus behind not judging others is that we examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith. That means we look at our own motives for the works that we do. We examine our works because it's a tangible way we can see our own faith. Faith's invisible. Well, it's not invisible to God, but it's invisible to ourselves and to each other. James asks us this straight up in chapter two of his book. What do you do with your faith? His letter speaks to each of us on an individual level, not to us about others, but about ourselves. He's telling us to ask ourselves about our own works. He's using himself as the object lesson of how that process works. 
In verse 20, he says, Will you know, O empty man, that your faith is dead without works? He's not telling you to look at the faith of other people to see if their, their works are empty. It makes no sense because one, you can't see the connection between faith and works. It's literally hidden from the human eye. Only God can see the motive behind the works. And two, you would be judging another person doing exactly what Jesus just told you not to do. Then James uses Abraham as an example of works that are alive. That means works activated by true faith, not a human motivation. Abraham's works had justified him because he trusted in God, not himself. And the test for faith activated works is between you and God alone, like Abraham was alone, not for others to see. That's the purpose of what James is saying. God already knew what Abraham was going to do, right? Abraham had to walk through it in order to feel his own faith. Real works are always in keeping with the biblical examples of Abraham and Rahab. They're our litmus test. Both of them were willing to personally risk and personally sacrifice as individuals. Works that are truly from authentic faith illustrate in real life good fruit. James moves us from thinking you have faith to living out that demonstration. He's saying real faith puts its money where its mouth is. When you, as an individual, know about a brother or sister in need, any need, whatever you do or don't do is what your faith is. The works done in private for a brother or a sister are actually who you are. What is your fruit, good or bad? James wants us to take our works out of the realm where there's spectators to see them and move our faith into a private one-to-one -one relationship. The brother or sister who receives your works will see and experience your fruit, but no one else will. This is the work that's faith activated through the fruit of love, the love that's been received from God, not human love. Notice James, for some reason, brings up the underworld just before he uses the faith of Abraham and Rahab as the object lesson. He pivots to demons out of the blue. I wonder why. That's rhetorical. He's obviously being cagey because not all works are created equal. Demons do religious work to look like sheep because they know the sheep can't see the invisibility of faith. Works don't prove faith to anyone other than yourself because they can be faked. True faith costs. I like how Bonhoeffer says, Discipleship has a cost. It does. True faith, real faith, is demonstrated by works that involve individual sacrifice and risk. This is key, sisters. Fruit is not good when the works that demonstrate it are public instead of private. Faith only demonstrated in public is proof of rotten fruit. In 2 Timothy 3, God is describing who someone is, not what someone does. He's describing fruit that's experienced in relationship, not activities. The works from a dangerous man look like a boast in front of the kids about fixing your tooth, even though it's not covered under insurance. But then the fruit you experience in private is clenched jaw complaining about how much it cost to do it, even though he knew the cost. The works from a dangerous man look like him talking to people about financial strategies, buying books on finances. 
but then the fruit you experience is stinginess towards the family and reckless and frivolous spending on himself and no savings and no life insurance. The works from a dangerous man look like him nodding in agreement to the sermon about how important fathers are to daughters. But then the fruit you experience is him trying to talk your 14 year old daughter into having sex with her boyfriend if she wants to keep him. The works from a dangerous man look like him planning a Christmas party for all the employees at his work. Then the fruit you experience is him intentionally buying gifts for those kids of the employees that are ill suited to the parents requests. The works from a dangerous man look like him uplifting his wife in pride for being a wife that stays at home. But the fruit you experience is being demeaned and belittled for expressing a desire to work or start a business. This is how a wolf feeds on the flesh. Faith faking works that the world or work or church or small groups see all the while in the home the truth of the rotten fruit is forced on the wife, the children, and even the pets. The fruit you experience is the truth, not the works you see. When you don't experience good fruit within your marriage, when you consistently experience the opposite of any love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, or self-control, in your relationship, that's the truth. Believe it. Don't believe the good works that are strategically generated for the church community to witness. Your husband is not emotionally unavailable, nor does he have anger issues. He's not having a bad day. It's not bad habits, nor is he too busy. You are experiencing the truth of who he is, rotten fruit, as it can only be experienced one-to-one -one in private. Closing thoughts. First, shh, don't say a word about this to him. Discovering that your husband's dangerous is a scary place to end up. It's never where you thought you'd be, and it feels like an un reality but your silence about your awareness of what he really is that's your safety zone and always remember a clueless guy that causes dysfunction and seems difficult he's not dangerous but the malignant man is not clueless he just pretends to be difficult and dysfunctional so that he can hide how dangerous he is